Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Ezekiel chapter 4. And in this particular passage, God gives to Ezekiel uh, instruction about the apostasy and the uh, failures of both Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom. Both of these nations were ones who failed to, uh, to really follow the Lord all the days. So there were times when they did, when they, when they were faithful. There were other times when they weren't. And so uh, it was because of their faithlessness that they, were, that they were carried off into the Babylonian captivity. Now the Babylonian captivity, according to historians, happened uh, basically in 586 BC. And so in that particular time, uh, from there they were going to be in captivity for about 70 years. And so uh, we recognize that uh, in this particular time frame, that's, that's the time that Ezekiel is prophesying. Now in Ezekiel chapter 4, he is again being uh, enjoined to be an example to the people there. And it says here that he is, to, um, uh, in verse 5, uh, let me find it there. Uh, he says, For I assign you the number of days, 390 days, equal to the number of years of their punishment. So long shall you bear the punishment for the house of Israel. And uh, in, the per in the first part of that, he says that you're going to lie on your side, on your left side, I believe, for Israel, and on your right side for Judah. I'm not exactly sure how all of that worked. Uh, I'm assuming that he had to get up at certain times, but he would lie there uh, those amount of days corresponding to the number of years that the people of Israel had uh, been apostate. Now, if you, if you look at that 586 B.C., and you go back five, uh, 390 years, you're back to about uh, 496, uh, I'm sorry, 996, um, or excuse me, 976, and um, I'm going backwards, this is the negative. And, and in that particular time, you find yourself in approximately the time of Solomon. And so we don't know the exact years that Ezekiel is is prophesying this, and we don't know all uh, the exact years of Solomon's reign and when it was that he fell into the idolatry because of the wives that he had. But we do recognize that roughly it's the same as what Ezekiel is supposed to be um, uh, lying on his side for because of their punishment, because of the apostasy of Israel. Of course, during all of that time, that was the time that they followed other gods, not only, not only among, uh, by Solomon, but his son Rehoboam, and then the northern kingdom of, uh, of Israel under Jeroboam, they continually followed the, the, uh, the apostate, uh, they were apostate and followed these other gods, these idols that God told them not to follow. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what I find to be fascinating here is that very accurately, again, I can't, I can't say that it is to the day and to the specific year, but, but very accurately the scripture describes how long uh, Ezekiel recognized Israel was apostate. And it's very accurate. And in many cases in the Old Testament, we find that, uh, that the dates given are indeed accurate, even though modern uh, technology tries to suggest differently. And there are doubts that are cast upon these kinds of dates. Uh, but, but in reality, again and again and again and again, we find the accuracy of the scripture to be true. And that's what we find here in Ezekiel. Now, were the, were the 40 years that he spent in the next few verses, um, or the 40 days, I should say, were they um, concurrent to what uh, Israel was doing, or were they in addition to 
My guess is they were concurrent, but I don't know that for sure. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that there were, uh, that, that, the, that the dates were accurate and that God in his, um, in his history that he proclaims, as well as in all of the other things that he says, is accurately giving us information and we can test that and we can find that that's true. So this is what is so very encouraging about Ezekiel chapter 4. Not that they were in, in captivity and that they were being punished, but that God in the midst of it is watching over them and he sees that and he's recording and he knows and his mercy is throughout all of that particular time. Father, we thank you that your mercy is upon us today as well. We thank you that your word has, uh, has spoken and you have given to us your truth and that truth is accurate. And Father, I pray for us who are listening to this video blog that you would reestablish in our hearts and minds the veracity of the scripture. I pray that if there are any who are wrestling with uh, the questions of your truth, uh, questions of the accuracy of uh, the testimonies of the, of the gospel writers, I pray, Father, that you would remind them that you have, uh, that, that you've given us truth. And, and even though we may not understand it all entirely and some of the things may be obscured to us, I pray that it will give us confidence that we can trust you. So we do, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.